Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord God Almighty, the maker and the possessor of heaven and earth. I am David Eichbonner, and this is David Eichbonner Ministries, our communion and anointing service. Today, we are going to begin with prayer, and we will have a time of worship, after which we are going to be studying the Bible together. Then, after the Bible study, we are going to have our communion, and our anointing oil will be blessed. The teaching of today is the curse of the law. The curse of the law. I want you to stay on till the end. The teaching pr promises to be something that will benefit you. We need to understand what the curse of the law is. And so I welcome you. And as we always do, we're going to begin with a few minutes of prayer. And please do share this video. Let's get people blessed. Let's begin. Thank the Lord for this day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to thank him. Give him thanks and give him praise. For the Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. For the Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Thank him that he has brought you thus far. He has protected you from attacks of the enemy. Give him thanks. If God is not protecting you, you wouldn't be able to stand. The Bible says, if the Lord does not uh, protect the city, the watchmen labor in vain. It will be a waste of time for you to stay awake if God is not protecting you. Lord, we thank you for your protection. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for this day that we have again to know you more. For every day is an opportunity to know you more, to grow in spirit. We are grateful, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, maker and possessor of heaven and earth. To you be all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to let go of every offense in your heart. Let go of every offense. Somebody has annoyed you, let it go. Because you too have annoyed other people. So let it go. Let go of every anger and bitterness. And you are going to speak to God as confessing your own sins unto him. You are going to confess your sins unto the Lord and ask for mercy. So now confess your sins unto the Lord and ask him for mercy. Confess the thoughts the words and the actions you have taken. Confess them unto him and ask for mercy. O oh, Heavenly Father, forgive the thoughts we've had, the words we've spoken, and the things we have done that have been sinful. Lord, you are God of mercy. There is forgiveness of sins with you. Therefore is your name greatly feared. Have mercy on us, O God. Forgive the lies, the bitterness, the foolish speaking, the gossip, the slander. And help us that, Lord God, we would know where and when to make restitution for wrongdoing. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to now ask the Lord to speak to you. 
when you ask the Lord to speak to you, what will be said today will be, you will understand it. Whatever will be taught, you will understand it. God will speak to you concerning your situation, concerning your life. So ask him to speak to you. Ask him to talk to you. Ask him to talk to you. For the Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. Speak. Ask the Lord for mercy. Ask him to speak to you. Just drop it. Lord, we thank you for your word. We ask that, Lord, you will speak to us. You will speak, Lord God, to each and every one of us that we will understand. We want understanding of your word. The entrance of your word gives light. Your word is living, sharper than any two-edged sword piercing unto the marrow, the dividing of the soul and spirit. Lord, let your word burn in us. Set us on fire with your word. We pray that yokes be broken even in this service. We ask for your presence wherever this service is participated in. We pray for your presence to be mighty. We pray, Lord God, that you will stretch forth your hand to save, heal, and deliver, and that signs and wonders will be done in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord God, that even contact with this service will bring miracles and deliverance and salvation. We thank you for answering our prayers in Jesus' name. Give us understanding of the teachings. Give us understanding of every aspect of this service. We pray, Lord God, that our praise and worship will arise as incense unto you. And your blessings will come down upon us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, we take authority over every evil force and spirit and every wicked spirit that will try to hinder this service will bind them and we forbid them from functioning in the name of Jesus. From transmission to reception, it shall be clear in Jesus' name. Amen. I welcome every one of you. Good morning. And thank you for joining. So we are going to have a time of worship and then the word will come. There will be teaching and then communion and our anointing oil will be blessed. The topic of today's teaching is the curse of the law. It's something we need to understand so that we be, don't become lawless and we don't become legalistic. So I welcome every one of you. Please do share and invite others to join. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. God bless you. And we're having uh, our brother and a guest who has come in before, Chris Hooks. I'm inviting him to lead us in worship. He will be leading us in worship for some minutes, and then I will begin the teaching. So I'm adding Chris Hooks from Obama, United States of America. Should be getting the ad in a moment. Okay, I welcome Chris. <laughs> Good morning, David. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, Are you ready? The sound's messing up again.
Uh, a little bit. Can they hear me? I hear something. <laughs> All right. Sorry, for, sorry about that. Okay, okay, go ahead. Okay. This is called Empty Me. Holy fire, burn away my desire for anything that is not of you and is of me. I want more of you and less of me. And holy fire, burn away my desire, yeah, for anything that is not of you and is of me. I want more of you and less of me. Yeah. Empty me. And empty me. Yeah. And fill, won't you fill me? With you, with you, yeah. And holy fire, burn away my desire for anything that is not of you and is of me. I want more of you and less of me. Empty me and empty me, yeah. And fill, won't you fill me with you, with you, yeah. And thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Jesus. Holy fire, holy fire, and holy fire. Hallelujah. You have any other? Are you done? Or are you you want to give us <laughs> some? I was I was done. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, the David. fire of God be upon every participant in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Chris. Hallelujah. That's Chris Hooks from Alabama. He is also a gospel singer. I think he. And I think he's going to wax another soon. So probably when his album is out. The next album is out. I will just share it on the page. Thank you for joining. Today's teaching is the curse of the law. Let's understand the curse of the law. We are going to look at Galatians chapter 3. You see, I'm, while you are opening to Galatians chapter 3, I want to tell you uh, my observation. In every period, of uh, Christianity, there is a message that is emphasized. There is a message that is given to the people. And we've had the time of the, 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 the time when God moved in divine healing. The emphasis was divine healing. We, we saw that uh, early last century. And then there was a period of faith. Justification by faith. We had a period of faith teaching. Now, somewhere along the line, at the time the teaching ministry was actually being uh, was growing, there were certain teachers that came up and started emphasizing that we are not under the, the law. We are under grace. 
I don't dispute that. Pardon me. I love talking it in. So, pardon me with that. So, a lot of teaching was on. Check to make sure the sound is clear. We not being under the law. That we are not under the law. We are under grace. And a lot of people rejoiced at that, but didn't actually understand what the law was. They were just excited that we are not under the law, under grace. And they felt justified to go and do whatever they wanted to do. Assuming that God could not hold them responsible for sin because we are under grace. So that was the assumption then. A lot of teachers were just emphasizing, we are not under the law, we are under grace. Uh, You can do this, it doesn't matter. Do that, it doesn't matter. But I listened back then to these teachers who were emphasizing grace, grace, and they never explained what the law was. They never explained what the law, I didn't hear them at any time explain what the law was, but we saw the effect. We had, I would like to call it a generation of professing believers that were no different from those they called unbelievers, except that they were active in organizations called churches. And then sin became normalized, such that the sins you see in the world, you see in the church. And there was this emphasis that of speaking in tongues. You know, when God releases a message, the devil releases a counter. We must understand that. When a message is released prophetically for a season, Satan releases a counter uh, a message. At this period of, the, of what we call the Word of Faith movement, where a lot of people now began to teach faith. We had hyper-grace teachings come in. People began to emphasize that all you need to do is give your life to Jesus Christ, and then whatsoever, you are not bound by the law. Do live your life the way you want to live it. There is grace covering. The emphasis left the fruit of the Spirit as a means of identifying a believer to to so-called tongues. Why I say so-called tongues is because some of these tongues you hear people speaking are not from the Holy Spirit. I have casted out demons from someone who told me herself that she was an agent of the devil, a witch. She confessed to me that she was a witch. Yet, this lady was praying in tongues with me in my own prayer circle. She was in my prayer circle. I had about five people that I used to pray with. And she one day confessed that she was to bring me down. That was why she appeared as a Christian. She was praying in tongues. I was surprised. Jesus said you shall know them by their fruit, not by their tongues. But you notice that this word of faith teaching, when it came up, the enemy sent his own. Just as when the owner of the field sowed the wheat, the, dev- the enemy came and sowed the tares. The enemy brought in his own emphasis on gifts of the Spirit rather than fruit of the Spirit. Because when you believe you are not bound to do the right thing, you will rate yourself according to your giftings and according to uh, what you can bring out as a spectacular act. But when you know that the law being spoken of is not what you were taught, you will be more careful 
Because Jesus said people who are lawless will go to hell. So we see that there was a movement that came while God was doing his own, the devil was doing his own thing. And we saw a lot of emphasis move from the fruit of the spirit, from living right to being a a tongue-speaking Christian, from being a, a universal Christian. What I mean universal Christian, that is, you are a believer if you move from this church to the other. We now saw kingdoms being built. They were actually prisons, but they were called churches, whereby if you move from this church to the next church, they treat you as though you are not born again until you pledge allegiance to their denomination by going through their own foundation teaching, even if you were baptized before they baptize you again, and then you must now begin to uh, talk like them and call the pastor Papa and the pastor's wife, even if she is not even called into the ministry, you call her Mama, and then they accept you into their fold. That was what the devil did. He convinced preachers to take the emphasis away from the fruit of the spirit, which is the universal identifier of the believer. The fruit of the spirit is the universal identifier of the believer. To take the emphasis away from that to the denominational display of gifts. And so people rated themselves by praying in tongues. I pray in tongues. I pray in the spirit. But many of you haven't heard me pray in the spirit because the Bible says that if you are speaking in an unknown tongues, you should speak quietly if you don't have an interpreter. You don't publicly speak in an unknown tongue if there is no interpreter. But the early Christians practiced this. When someone spoke in tongues, there was an interpreter. The church was familiar with this. But in these last 30 years, we see that people are praying in tongues without interpreter and they are doing it indiscriminately. Some people even make mockery of it. I, I know of a denomination, a large denomination in my country that they were telling people they would teach them how, they are new members, they would tell them that they would teach them how to pray in tongues. And you have prostitutes, you have drug dealers, you have uh, 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 adulterous men, when they are with their fellow denomination members, they begin to babble and say that they are speaking in tongues. It became a plaything. I once asked somebody, the tongues you have spoken, what are they about? Because when I pray in tongues, there are times I have an understanding of what I am praying about. I pray in tongues for hours, but I don't do it publicly. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and 14 that we are to pray privately if there is no interpreter but the emphasis moved away to we are not under law but under grace and when it moved away people stopped looking at the law of god and began to listen to the law of their pastors so whatever the pastor says, they take it. Even if he is saying something that is obviously different from what is in the Bible, they take it because they are under grace. They take it because they are under a grace. When Jesus said, concerning the law, he said, I came to fulfill it, not abolish it. He was serious. Let's look at Galatians chapter 3. And then we will know what the law is that the Bible says we are not under. It's different from the law that people are projecting. The entire chapter of Galatians chapter 3. Okay, Benjamin. All right. And here comes Benjamin. You foolish Galatians who had been bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose 
people's eyes, Jesus Christ had been evident, set forth, crucified among you. This only word I learn of you received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. I am so foolish, having, having begun in the Spirit, I am now made perfect by the flesh. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministered to you, to you the Spirit, and worked miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they, they which are of faith the same as the children of Abraham, and the scriptures foreseeing that God will justify the hidden. Though faith preached before the gospel upon unto Abraham, saying, Indeed shall all nations be blessed. So then they so then they which be of faith are blessed with, with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all the, in all things which are written in the book of the law to them to do them. But that but that no man, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for for the just it is evident for the just shall live by faith, and the law is not a, of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in the, in them. Christ had redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Holy of the Spirit of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but though it be but a man's covenant, yet if yet if be if it be confirmed, no man dis on on, on disannulls it, annuls it. Disannulls it or added there there to no one annuls it. I think that's what's written. Annulls. No one, no one annuls or adds to it. Go ahead from verse sixteen. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promise made. He, he said not, and to seed as of many, but as of one, and not to and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before before of God in Christ, the law, which was four four hundred and thirty years after, cannot dishonor. This are now that it should make the promise of non effect. For it for if the inheritance of be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then servant wherefore then servant the law? It was added because of transgression, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a meditator. New now a meditator is not a, med- a mediator. A mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promise of God? God for God forbid. For if there had been a law given, a law given, which could have, which would have, which could have given life, very righteous. Verily righteousness should have should have been by the law, but the scriptures have had concluded all on that all on that sin, that the promise by faith of Christ of Jesus Christ might be given might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, where were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which which should afterwards be prevailed. Wherefore the law was as schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after the faith is come, we are no longer under under a schoolmaster. Hallelujah. This chapter is so rich. Now, 
what is the law being spoken of? The Bible says the law was ordained of angels to prepare the way for the one who was promised and who had the promises of Abraham. The blessings of Abraham were given to his seed. Until that seed manifested, the law was given to keep the nation of Israel ready to receive the, the seed of Abraham. That is why Jesus said he fulfilled the law. The law of Moses was to point to Jesus. The law of Moses is not for Israel. It's to point to Jesus. The law has the rituals, part of it, the temple service, the bull, offering of animals. Those things were ordained of angels. That's what the Bible says. Angels wanted it so that in the nation will be ready for Christ coming. They will be under check until Jesus comes and shows the way. That is why on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Jesus was transfigured on the mountain, Moses and Elijah appeared and were talking to him. And after that, a voice from heaven came and uh, spoke, saying, This is my beloved son, hear ye him. So, the traditions of that came with the, the with that Moses was given were until Christ came. Now Christ told us because he told us how to live because he had given us life. The Bible says that the Gentiles that have no that didn't have the law were a law unto themselves. The Bible is pointing at something that there was the promise of faith before the law. Abraham was not Jewish, but he was righteous by faith. The law was to prepare a nation through which the Messiah will come so that the nation will not be so corrupt that God will have to curse them or destroy them. That was what the law of Moses was to do. It was a schoolmaster until the Messiah came. And when Jesus came, the law was fulfilled. The law that has to do with the practices. So when people are talking of third temple as it's a good thing, that is the temple of God, it is not the temple of God. In the book of Revelation, the Bible says the Antichrist was sitting in the temple of God as though he is God. It is not that building. It's the human being through AI, 5G connected technology. For once, the devil will be able to go into the human body and dwell through artificial intelligence. Directing what the person thinks, knowing what the person thinks. People who are demon possessed, their thoughts are not known to the devil. He can guess their thoughts, but he doesn't know exactly what they are thinking. But when the, the body is now connected to a computer, the computer can even generate thoughts for that person. Then the Antichrist sits in the temple of God. The Bible says the body, our body is a temple. So that building is not a temple. Then it was the temple because Christ could not live in man because of sin. Now, because of the work on the cross, our bodies have been restored again as the temple of God. We are now the temple, not that building. So when people are jumping and falling on each other that they want to build a third temple, they are being, they are not being smart. And then, why is it that the Bible says that, look here, Abraham was justified by faith. 
people are under the impression that by carrying out Jewish ceremonies, they are righteous. People think they are righteous by being Jews. But the Bible is saying here that the promises were given to one person, not to the seeds, but to the seed. All the blessings and the promises of God are not given to anyone other than Jesus Christ and to everyone in Christ. That person becomes a beneficiary. The only way you can be a beneficiary of the promises of God to Abraham is if you are in Christ Jesus. Because when God was making those promises to Abraham's seed, he was making those promises to Jesus Christ. So we are blessed as long as we follow Christ. Outside Christ, we are not in. That's why Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. I'm going now to explain. I'm going to tell you what the curse of the law is. The curse of the law, it's in Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 26. It's quoted here in Galatians chapter 3. It says, cursed is anyone that does not fulfill every aspect of the law. Cursed is everyone that doesn't fulfill every aspect of the law. And that is the curse of the law in that no one person fulfilled every aspect of the law. You're shocked. Not one. Everyone fell short. And so everyone was brought under condemnation. And that is why the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because not one person lived holy, continuously. Everyone fell. Everyone made mistakes. So all of humanity broke the law. The nation of Israel broke the law. And so they came under the curse of the law. I'm saying, okay, someone asking about, so are you saying that the third temple is AI? No. What I'm saying is, the way Satan will be able to dwell in God's temple, the human body, is going to be through an AI technology that will connect the human being, the individual, to the internet of things. That way, thoughts can be generated for that person. So the human body is the temple of God. But Satan has not been able to generate the thoughts the way he would want to, to control a human being. Even those demons possessed, they can repent. That is because the devil does not have 100% control over them. So now, back to what I was saying. Everyone has fallen short. Everyone has sinned. Everyone has come under that condemnation that we sinned. Moses, the one that brought the law, broke the law. And that was why God said you would, that he wouldn't physically enter the promised land. Everyone sinned. Everyone broke the law. And that is why when Jesus, can you read the book of Matthew, you see him rebuking the Jews because they could not follow the law. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. They despise the Samaritans. Just like the Palestinians today are despised. They despise the Samaritans. The people that were brought into the land of Israel by the Babylonians. They were not dwelling in Samaria. The Bible says the Jews did not talk to them. They regarded them as the ancient Amalekites. Jesus told them, said, you have fallen short because you do not love your neighbor as yourself. He said that's the second most important commandment. And they were surprised. His own apostles were surprised that he was talking with a Samaritan woman. Because it's just like it is today. Jews don't talk to Palestinians. So they were wondering, what is he talking to the Goim? And you know, the Goy. Why is he talking to this Goy? And Jesus said, look here. Um, the harvest is ripe. That woman brought so many people to him from Samaria. So everyone fell short. 
the curse was if you cannot fulfill every aspect you have broken all aspects and so everyone fell short and jesus came to deliver us from that that was why he took our place he took the punishment that came as a result of the curse of the law he took it and blessed us with the blessings that were promised him by god through abraham he blessed us in that all we need to do, just like Abraham did, is to believe in him, is to accept him as our Lord and Savior. By doing that, we acknowledge that we cannot keep God's law by our power, that we need him to keep God's law. And so we come into him. We come under his umbrella we come under his umbrella and then he covers us up and he guides us by his Holy Spirit to keep God's commandments. You should know this, that the law of Moses had the moral aspect. Love your neighbor, do not commit adultery. And it had the ritual aspect. If a lady is in her period, she is ritually unclean. If a lady, uh, uh, if, a, if a man... Uh, does this he has to go wash his hands if this when they return they wash themselves they, they sacrifice every time they sin that was the ritual aspect that was to cover sin it was that that aspect has been taken care of now so now the moral code in the bible in the torah we can keep by the spirit of god's assistance now we have the ability to love our neighbor, irrespective of their race, skin color, or social status. We love them because we now know that we are all one in Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile in Christ. We are one. The Bible says that we are one body. People have been lying and saying that the church is grafted into Israel. That is a lie. The church is not grafted into Israel. The scripture says, grafted with the believing Israel. Because the law was given to the Israelites, not the Jews, the Israelites, the 12 tribes. Jews are from predominantly one tribe, tribe of Judah. Some, some of the tribe of Benjamin remained with the tribe of Judah. That's why they were called Jews. The Israelites were given the word of God, the, the, the law. And so the first people to receive the gospel were the Israelites. Those that believed were taken as part of Christ. And then the non-Israelites who believed were also taken to be part of Christ. So we are not grafted into any Israel. We are not grafted into Israel. We are grafted with the believing Israel. We, are, we come together as one, as the new Israel of God. The Bible calls the church the Israel of God. So when people are making it look like it's all about Israel, it is wrong. That is why... The scripture is saying that before the law, there was a promise made. Before the law of Moses came, a promise was made to Abraham. So that law was not the first, is the promise. Abraham was not counted righteous because he wore a tefillin on his head, this box. He was not counted righteous because he wore the zit zit. Know that sure, prayer sure. He was not counted righteous for that. Abraham was not counted righteous because he spoke Hebrew. Abraham was counted righteous because he believed God. And let me tell you, that belief is not a passive acceptance of a situation. But what you believe, you live it. You become what you believe. You act what you believe. You speak what you believe. Belief, that faith is a transformation. It's not just information. It's transformation. When Abraham had faith in God, he was ready 
to sacrifice Isaac, believing that God who has spoken in times past that through Isaac, a nation nations will come, will raise Isaac from the dead. So Abraham believed God with everything about him. That is the promise. Abraham believed God and he was counted righteous. So when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you do whatever he says, whether it is convenient or not, and then you are saved. So by being Jewish, you are not saved. By being uh, uh, by by go, by gluing yourself to rabbis, you are not saving your soul. You are not saving your soul. Let's look at a scripture. First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse thirteen. 1 Corinthians. Can you put it as a comment? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. Please do share this video. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body whether Jews or Greeks. Whether, when he's talking of Greeks, now he refers to the Gentiles, the non-Jews. Whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For by the Holy Spirit, we are all baptized into one body. That is the body of Christ. In that body, there is no superior race. When I hear people say they are not Christians, they are Messianic Jews, and I am wondering, what happened to the brain? Messianic Jews, Christians. Who were the first people called Christians? They were Israelite believers. The the first Christians were Israelites. They were Jews. They were called Christians because they were acting like Christ. They were acting like little messiahs. But when people exalt the language and say, if it is not Hebrew, you are not holy. By speaking Hebrew, you are holy. By dancing Hebrew, you are holy. That shows ignorance. You see, the Hebrew roots, the Hebrew roots movement, those that emphasize being Jewish rather than being Christian. The um, Hebrew names people, those that want to say that, no, it's not Jesus, it's Yehusha. Later they say Yahuwah. So I'm not like, they get confused. Have you noticed that they lack the power of the Spirit? Show me somebody that is calling Yehuwah and saying he wants to speak Hebrew in every aspect. And I will show you a person that is void of testimonies of miracles and healings. He is someone that you you hardly ever hear him lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. I rebuke you, devil. Sometimes people get moved by demons to make noise when I'm live. Ignore that noise. Do you know such people, they end up Going back to to the law of Moses, they want they own, they are the ones singing about the third temple. They are the ones who are trying to be Hebrews. When the gospel was taken to the Gentiles, there were Jews that followed and tried to infiltrate, and sometimes they did infiltrate and cause commotion. This Hebrew roots movement is not new. It was a movement in the time of the apostles. It was a movement in the time of the apostles. There was a time there was a quarrel. If you are not circumcised, you can't be a believer in Christ Jesus. And when the councils had to sit, because of how contentious it was, 
Peter, James, John. Uh, when I mean James now, James, the brother of Christ, because the other James had been killed. Paul and others, they sat and they came out with a communique. Look here, you must not be physically circumcised to be a believer in Christ. You must not keep the law of Moses. The Hebrew roots movement that is trying to turn people's attention away from Christ, but rather to the physical land of Israel, which is going to be destroyed along with the rest of the earth. These people are the ones singing about the coming third temple as though it's a very beautiful thing that is coming. Whereas the temple that is being built is being built by Freemasons, by Talmudic people. They are animal sacrifices. If you have done any pastor or believer or professing believer that is dancing that a red haifa has been killed, is foolish because if the blood of bulls and goats could save. Then why will Christ Jesus come? What was the point in Christ Jesus coming and paying the price on the cross? If the blood of bulls and goats could do it, why are you dancing that people are, are rejecting Christ by killing animals? As though you are saved by the blood of a red heifer. They say, no, it's a sign of the end. You should be mourning that there are people deceived. People deceived into that. You should be weeping that people are still deceived. Not dancing and calling it the end. These are the same people that say don't preach to the Jews. They will be saved after the rapture. What other way to hate the Jews than to refuse to preach to them? What other way? To show them so much hatred. The best way to love the Jewish people is to preach to them the gospel. Whether you are, we are going to disappear seven years before Christ comes down. Or we are going to disappear when Christ comes. Preach the gospel to them. That is why James the apostle was killed. Why didn't the, the twelve apostles say no need to preach to the Jews till... Uh, the after the rapture. Why is it after Schofield brought out that his Bible and heretical teachings that people now say, don't preach to the Jews. Don't preach to them. They will get righteous. They will, they will accept Jesus when the Antichrist goes into the temple. Why then was Peter killed? Why was James, the brother of John, killed? Why were the other... Why was Stephen stoned? Why didn't they just shut up their mouth and wait for the rapture to come and then preach? We should be careful because these people don't want the Israelites to receive the gospel. So they are teaching heretical dispensationalism so that the Israelites will be kept out of the gospel that the early church were sown into to kill oppressed for preaching to them why didn't they just wait brethren the curse of the law is also this i want to show you something there were tribes that god cursed and said they will never enter the, the temple congregation do you know that there were some nationalities because of what they did to Israel when they were entering their land, when they came out of Egypt. God said, these people will never enter my, the congregation forever. But do you know, in the book of Revelations, the Bible says, and I saw people, that is the redeemed, with Christ, from every tribe, tongue, and nation. So is it that there's something wrong with the Bible? No. That's the curse of the law. There were tribes that God cursed because of the wickedness they showed to Israel. He said they will not come into his congregation. But when Christ came, that curse was broken because Christ those tribes that were regarded as gone. Christ redeemed them. And so, from every tribe and tongue, there are people that are getting saved. Because Jesus 
redeemed us from the curse of the law. Those who could not receive salvation by virtue of their nationality now are entitled to salvation by virtue of the blood of Jesus Christ. There were certain people that God said should not serve him. Those with hunchback. Those that had uh, 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 certain deformities. They were not able to serve in the temple. Even if they were by lineage supposed to be priests. Today, blind people preach the gospel. Deaf people preach the gospel. Hunchbacks preach the gospel. Because they have been redeemed from the curse of the law. So now, those things that limited us prior can no more limit our service to God. Because the curse has been broken. Now mankind is saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. But those who will receive that salvation are those who will believe in Christ Jesus. And that faith in Christ is transformatory. It's not something that you just passively say, I agree. No, when you believe, you become. It shows in your words and your actions. You become what you believe. If you believe you are a girl, you act like a girl. If you believe you are a man, you act like a man. If you believe you are an idiot, you act like an idiot. So when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you are saved, it's not a passive agreement to something. It is rather a commitment to that person. You be, the Bible says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you do so, you commit yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ and you are saved. So herein lies the error that for years has plagued the church. When we were told that Christ has delivered us from the law. We were encouraged to do whatever we liked, that God had no choice. The moment we say a prayer and we begin to say, ba, 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 boo, 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 and that, that is it. We are Christians. God has to take us. I tell you this, many pastors still believe that and preach that. And you see a lot of sin. And that is why in Matthew 7, Jesus said, on that day, Many will say to him, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not do mighty works in your name? And he will say, I don't know you. You workers of lawlessness. You workers of iniquity. So it is not your gifts. It's the fruit God is after. Let us know this. The Bible says that the Gentiles that didn't have the law have become a law to themselves. What is right, you know it. Don't try to play legal with God. God is the one who authored the scriptures. You see, now we are able by the Spirit of God to do that which God intended. We are able by His Spirit to do it. So all you need to do is to say, Holy Spirit, fill me. When the Spirit of God fills you, He goes into every aspect of your life, your finances, your marriage, your job. You now do things to please Christ. That is what it means to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. So I want you right now, if you are not born again, I want you to give your heart to Jesus. I want you to speak to Him. Speak to God in your own words. Tell the Lord you love Him, that you repent of your sins. Tell the Lord you repent of your sins. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask the Lord to cleanse you with the blood of Jesus. Talk to him. Talk to him. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me. I surrender my life to you. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Ask the Lord to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Is my mic still out? Okay. Ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. And to write your name in his book of life. The rest of you who are already born again, I want you to ask the Lord to give you a love for righteousness and a hatred for iniquity. That he should give you the grace 
to give you the grace to walk right. Yes, many who believe in the rapture, in, when I say rapture, I mean that the, the church will be taken away seven years before the return of Christ. They are preaching to the Jews, and that is true. They are preaching to the Jews, but not all. Not all are. Because they believe that in the seven years of tribulation, the Jews will just accept the gospel. But, so I agree that there are people who believe in that seven year period that are still preaching to the Jews. All of us are to preach to the Jews. Whether you believe that or you don't believe that. All right? If you are a believer. So ask the Lord to give you the grace to live right. Ask him to give you the grace to live right. Ask him for that grace. The important thing is that each and every one of you lives holy. If, if a trumpet sounds and we disappear seven years before the return of Christ, you are holy. You are, we are all together. If it is not that way, but rather Jesus comes the second time and the trumpet sounds and we are caught up to meet him. We are all holy. So the important thing is that we should stay holy. Whichever way, whether it's a Mercedes or it's a Jaguar that comes to pick us, it's our vehicle, we enter. So ask God for that grace to walk in holiness and in righteousness. Ask him for that grace. Ask him for that grace. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, give us the grace to serve you. And for everyone who has given their hearts to you, Lord, we pray that you will keep them holy and righteous till the day they meet you. We pray, Heavenly Father, that our lives shall be all about Jesus, not about us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to take our communion. And those of you who gave your life to Jesus Christ and others, I want you to get baptized in water. Get baptized in water. As any believer, any baptized Christian is qualified to baptize. So you can get your, uh, ask any believer in Christ to dip you into water, bring you out, symbolizing your death with Christ and resurrection with Christ, symbolizing your death to this world and your life with Christ Jesus. So water baptism is important. Is important. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for every unliving bread and wafer lifted up unto you. In, a, in obedience to your word, we take this communion and we place a demand, O oh Lord, on this communion that as we take of the as we take of the body of Christ as we eat the body of Christ we receive every a replacement for that which is damaged every good thing that is damaged and missing in our lives we receive a new one from the body of Christ whether it be wounds whether it be fertility, whether it be our prosperity, whether it be health, everything that is damaged in our lives, in any aspect of our life and physically in our bodies, any health defect, Lord, we place a demand on the body of Jesus Christ. As we take it, let there be a replacement. Oh Lord, we thank you. Turn this bread, this wafer into the body of Jesus in us. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you break it. Even if you are alone, you break it because the Bible says his body was broken for us. And then you take your fruit juice. Fruit juice, anything non-alcoholic, you can use water. Jesus was so concerned about the communion 
that he said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. He was more concerned about this communion than celebrating Christmas. He was more concerned about the communion than we arguing over his birthday. This is how he wants to be remembered by our communion taking. So believers should not be arguing over whether the birthday of Christ is September, is December, or whichever month. This is how we remember him. If you want to celebrate the birthday of Christ in January, you are free to do so. You are celebrating Christ, but this is what he emphasizes. And so every church, every believer should take communion as often as you choose, but often. The key word there is often. Jesus said, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. So as we take this communion, the blood of Jesus Christ comes into us. The Bible says the life of all flesh, the life of all flesh is in the blood. So when we take his blood, we take his life. And his life is a life of holiness and fullness. So when we take it, when we are, we are taking as we drink, we are declaring that we receive the life of Christ in us and that God should make us live like Jesus. Live like him. Lord, we thank you for every cup lifted unto you and the contents of this cup. We thank you. We ask that you turn it into the blood of Jesus. We ask, Lord God, that as we drink, we will drink the blood of Jesus, his life into us. That now, what we would live like Christ lived. He walked in holiness. He walked in divine health. Lord, we want to live like that. We want to love you. We ask, Lord, that it be our portion now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Then you take your anointing oil. You take your anointing oil. The Bible says in James, in the book of James, that if anyone be sick, he should be anointed by the elders and you will recover. So when you are anointed with oil, you will recover. Now, take your oil. Father, I thank you for every anointing oil lifted unto you. Every oil lifted unto you. Whether it be olive oil, granite oil, or whichever oil, I thank you. We ask, Lord, that you will fill it with your power and your fire. We pray, Lord God, that whoever is anointed will be healed of every infirmity, will be set free from every bondage, will be protected from every attack. And I pray concerning those who are not, who have no access to oil. Lord, I pray that even as we who have access to oil anoint ourselves. As I anoint myself, O oh Lord God, I pray that your grace will also locate them. I pray, Father, your grace will locate them, even without the oil, if they have no access to it. Lord, thank you. Bless this oil in our hands and turn it into holy anointing oil. We are grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. So if it is olive oil, if it is... Um, any other kind of oil, cooking oil, just get a little and anoint yourself. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what you do. So thank you for participating in this service. Thank you for sharing this video. God bless you for sharing it. Feel free to download it. Download, share. Because videos can disappear from the internet. But when you download it, you have, it a, you have a copy which you can decide to upload on your own site. You have my permission. But let this teaching not disappear. Download, share, or record it anyhow you want to do it because teachings are disappearing from the internet. And the time is coming that even to be illegal to preach. But for now, let's do what we can. Thank you for participating in the service. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
May Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Please like this page on Facebook. Click follow. You see options appear. Click see first. That way you are sure of bypassing the censorship. And if you are watching through any social media channel and you are not subscribed, click the subscription button below. A bell notification sign is supposed to appear. Uh, it's supposed to be by the button even. You click on it. If there are options, click on all. God bless you. Thank you.